Hello everyone, this is The Average Joe. A long time ago, I said I would cover the Pokemon anime in my sorting series. Since Class 1A's Hogwarts houses went over well, it's time to revisit this old topic. There are a lot of characters in the 20 plus years of the show, so to keep things simple, I will only focus on Ash, his traveling companions, and the major rivals of each region. Except Galar. That show literally just started, and I have not seen a single episode of it, so I wouldn't touch that one with a 39 and a half foot pole. Let's just start with the protagonist, Ash Ketchum. Let's be honest, nearly every anime fantasy protagonist, no, no, nearly every fantasy protagonist in general gets an instant ticket to Gryffindor with slight connections to the other houses. Brave, passionate, hot-headed, fiercely protective, the man is a cut-and-dry lion. Which kind of makes it funny that his main partner is a mouse. Who knows, maybe there was a secret Aesop's Fable connection all along. The writers are four parallel universes ahead of us. Next, let's go to Misty. Over the years, Misty has developed into someone who could be considered Hufflepuff. Having to care for the baby Togepi kind of mellowed her out and made her a bit more compassionate and sympathetic to the world around her. But while she has slowly gotten over her temperamental violent edge, I still say she gets a slot in Gryffindor for her hot-headed tomboy charms. Next up is Brock. The two best houses for Brock are Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff. He's intelligent and skilled, but also a generally down-to-earth guy. Raising all the siblings himself gave him a caretaker's outlook on life, and his constant desire for love and affection play into his ability to connect with other people. If he had stayed as a Pokemon breeder, I might have stuck with Ravenclaw. But being a doctor, while it is going to require a lot of intellect, is only going to deepen his connection more so as a caretaker. So I am going to lean to Hufflepuff. Now for the first big rival of the series, Gary Oak. Gary has had a lot of character development. Early on, he was very much the Draco to Ashes Harry, a smug, condescending bully. As he gets older and looks more to become like his grandfather, he will draw closer and closer to a Ravenclaw. But while he's making progress, I still say he's kept that Slytherin edge so far. Still cunning, still looking towards a big goal, and still doing it with a cautious, intelligent approach. And since he was technically a companion for an entire region, Tracy. Tracy is literally just Caucasian Brock without the interesting backstory and characterization. He kind of lacks that caretaker drive, but he does still have that analytical mind, so he has to go to Ravenclaw. Joy. Next up is May. I will admit that Hoenn is the one that I watched the least out of the seasons, so I'm not as knowledgeable on the development of these characters. So if you have an idea, let me know in the comments. But to me, May seems the most like a Hufflepuff with some very strong Gryffindor vibes. Next up is Max. <sighs> I'm actually kind of angry to send this kid to my house because I hate him. But the fact that he's so analytical and studious is what gets him to Ravenclaw. I'm embarrassed for my eagle brethren. Moving on to the Sinnoh region, we have Dawn. Dawn is a very empathetic character. She's got a bit less temperament than the previous two, and much more heart. So I'm not really seeing anything else but Hufflepuff. And possibly the best rival in the series, Paul. Surprising absolutely no one, Paul is a cut-and-dry Slytherin. Gary was a bully, Paul is the antithesis to Ash's character. He's not a dreamer, he's ambitious. He takes the shortcuts by choosing the Pokémon with the most powerful stats, and cuts any signs of perceived weaknesses on his team. This kid could grow up to be Lord Voldemort. Now for the Unova region. Iris. Iris is the soft reboot of Misty's character, objectively speaking. 
Except she never got that character development that might make her a Hufflepuff. I'm trying to be as nonpartisan as I can. Well, trying in quotations, considering my previous statements on the other characters. But her arrogance and temperament make her a very easy Gryffindor. Silent. Okay, I'll try to be nicer to Silent. In the same vein as Iris, he objectively is the soft reboot of Brock's character, but he's much more focused on his studies. Sure, he was a waiter, and thus very good at caring for other people, but the man is a connoisseur of literally everything under the sun. He also takes time out of all of his Pokemon battles to lecture his opponents on their shortcomings as a teaching tool to help them improve. So, Ravenclaw. And the big rival in the region? Trip. Trip is literally just Paul, except more racist. I... I really don't know where they were going with that whole thing about the Kanto boonies, but, um... Slytherin. Now let's go to the Kalos region. Thank God, good characters again. Okay, first off, Clement. Clement is a quirky inventor who's constantly getting into trouble for his inability to produce a working prototype. Aside from being the young Thomas Edison, minus the plagiarism, Clement can easily be called one of the most common Ravenclaw types you'll ever meet in your life. Next is Bonnie. Bonnie is, for lack of a better word, a child. She's immature, loves everyone, naive, and just loves taking care of cute animals. Not to stereotype, but she's definitely a Hufflepuff. Now for the only other person who might be able to stand up to Misty in the shipping wars, Serena. Serena's defining trait is her love and compassion. As she progresses, Ash inspires her to work hard and achieve her goals. What I'm trying to say here is that she's going literally nowhere else but Hufflepuff. Now for the first big rival of the season, Sawyer. I think everyone already knows where I'm going to play Sawyer. But for argument's sake, the only evidence I really need is the title of the episode where he faces Ash in the Callous League. Analysis versus Passion. His entire thing is logic and strategy. Ravenclaw. Finally, the other big rival in this region, Alon. When I first started writing this script, I thought Alon would be an obvious choice for Gryffindor. The more I thought about it, though, the more difficult it became for me to decide. He initially went out on this journey to find the Megastones because he was curious about what he could learn from them. As the assistant to the leading scientist of the region, he might find good company in Ravenclaw. Then when Lysander offered him the stone, he became Team Flare's muscle because he saw them as a necessary tool to become stronger. A very Slytherin move. Then when Marin's Chespin is injured in the battle, he changes course and tries to find a cure for her to be happy again. A good sign for Hufflepuff or Gryffindor. Out of everybody on this list, I wasn't expecting Alon to be the toughest sorting, but I guess his character was very well written. If I have to make a decision today, I'm gonna go with my gut and say Gryffindor. The one thing that stayed consistent in everything he ever did was his passion and his value for strength. Hey, we got two rivals in a row that weren't Slytherin. Finally, let's go to the Alola region. So, so many characters. Let's try to get through them quick. First off, Kiawe. Kiawe certainly has some wits about him, and has a bit of softer side. But overall, I'd put him in Gryffindor for his value of strength. Next up, Sophocles. I suppose Sophocles is very intelligent. So he also gets a spot in Ravenclaw. <laughs> Next up, Lana. Lana is more focused on the fun side of Pokémon than the determined passion of being the strongest. Her dream in life is to train her Pokémon to create the world's largest bubble. You could make the argument that she's got some of that Ravenclaw creativity, but overall, I'm thinking Hufflepuff. 
Next up, Malo. Malo certainly has a Gryffindor edge to her, but I think she's got just enough badger power in her to get to their house. Also, you remember in my Class 1A video when I discussed how much Sato would want to get into the Hufflepuff so that he can be close to the kitchens? Malo's entire thing is cooking up stuff. When she felt like she couldn't do it, she got down on herself enough to get drunk with a monkey in the woods. Hey, maybe she and Diabetes Hulk can make new recipes for the house elves to try together! Next up, Lily. Lily's got a lot of Ravenclaw in her, that's for sure. But overall, I'd give her the space in Hufflepuff for the amount of heart and compassion she possesses. Finally, the rival, Gladion. Gladion is in the same boat as Alon. He's got a lot of all four houses in him, and I really don't have a definitive answer. The best I can narrow it down is between Gryffindor and Slytherin. Overall, I've got to give it to Gryffindor for his love for family, but honestly, I kind of want to revisit this character at some point, just to be sure. And that wraps up the video! Let me know your thoughts. I'm sorry if I insulted your favorite character. I'm much more opinionated about this series than I am literally anything else. Kind of. Uh, give me suggestions for more sorting videos or anything else you'd like to see me do in the future. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Peace!